Good morning, everyone. It's Monday morning. It is 7.17 in the morning. I'm going to go ahead and start on Make a Card Monday. Um, hopefully, I'll wake up here in a bit. Um, something to note before I get going. I want to let you guys know that I have a series over on my Instagram that started up. If you're interested in mail art at all, you'll want to check it out. I'll have my Instagram link down below. Um, I'm doing a mail art rainbow. So I'm just making my way through all the rainbow colors and doing some mail art with that color. So right now I'm in the middle of the blues. It's going to be like that way for a little bit. But if you want to see all of that mail art, go ahead and check out my Instagram. Today I'm going to be using the Bria Reese basic watercolor set. It's not the metallics that I tried a few weeks ago. This is the basic set and I have yet to use them. I'm going to do some rainbow watercoloring. This is greatly inspired by my friend Jeff Lindbergh over on Instagram. I'll link his Instagram down below. He does a thing on his Instagram live on Saturday night um, called Craft Cocktails, where you know he gets himself a drink and he just crafts and he asks everyone in the live chat, um, in the live stream, what they would like to see and what they want him to do. So it's just some fun kind of community crafting. It's really cool. So I'm going to do something that was inspired by his Craft Cocktails live stream last Saturday, which was he was doing stuff for Pride and had some rainbow things going on. I only caught the tail end of it. But I thought I'd do a little bit of really easy rainbow watercolor. Before I get into the, all that, I want to see what colors are in this palette. So I'm going to use this swatch card that comes with the palette. And I'm just going to do a really simple little scribble of each one of these colors. To get it started and to make sure the colors are activated, I'm just going to use my spray bottle just to put a little water in each one of these wells. And then I'm going to get to it. So this titanium white's not going to show really because it's white. And on screen right now, you're seeing me paint these really fast. Um, I'm just going to speed through these. You can see how vibrant these colors are. These are really great basic shades. Okay, so here are the colors. I think those are some really great rainbow shades. It's a really good basic palette. I'm going to set this aside and reference it as I do my coloring. Got my hard board here that I'm going to use with my watercoloring, and I've got two pieces of watercolor paper. These are both Arches Cold Press, um, one slightly bigger than the other, and I am planning to die cut one of them. So I'm going to go ahead and use this heart die cut, which I'll be eventually cutting it out of, and I'm going to do it out of this smaller one. And I'm just going to trace the shape because I'm planning to do some stripes, and I want to make sure that all the colors will be on the heart. I'm just going to mark every half inch and I'm just going to lightly add some stripes. And then over here I'm going to be doing some uh, something else to add the rainbow. So I'm going to go ahead and tape these down. All right, so let's get painting. I'm going to bring in my palette here. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to start with the stripes first. And I don't want any of this pencil to be showing up around the edges for when I die cut. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of erase these lines a little bit. I mean, I'll still be able to see that they're there, but they won't be as obvious. They won't be trapped under the watercolor. And I'm going to paint every other one so that I can keep painting and have each section. And I want a nice bright color. I don't want a whole lot of variation. I'll get a little bit more variation in color when I paint the other background. Okay, so I'm using a flat brush and it's a little bit too wide for my sections when I splay the, the bristles out. So what I'm doing is holding it at an angle and then swiping while I paint. And I'm making sure I'm extending that stripe out a little bit so that when I die cut, I won't have any gaps. Okay, so the next color would be blue. And I think I'm going to do this blue right here. It's a little bit more of a true blue. This is what they're calling cobalt. And that's looking a little bit dark. 
So I'm going to do what I can to lighten it up by picking up color with my brush. My brush is just damp right now. It's not super wet. I've got a paper towel right here. I'm trying to pick up the color. I might come back over that later just to get a more solid shade. Okay, I'm gonna hit this with my heat tool and make sure these three colors are dry before I put in the secondary colors. Coming in with orange now. And I wanna make sure I don't have any white gaps. So I'm really hugging that red edge at the top. And then I'm going to really hug the yellow edge at the bottom. I'm gonna do the same that I did before where I just use the top edge of my angled brush and just take it right along that yellow edge. Had to load up my brush with more paint. I'm gonna come in here and go right along the blue edge. If I have any white gaps at all, I'm making sure to go back and grab those. Okay, and the last color is purple. Yeah, it can be a little bit dark, so I'm hoping by having it be a little watered down, it'll be enough to keep it under control. Perfect, okay, so those are my rainbow stripes. I'm gonna hit this with the heat tool and then move on to the next one. All right, before I move on, I'm just going to make this blue area a little bit more solid. Um, I think I walked that color back just a little bit too much before. I'm going to come back in and add a little bit more blue on top um, just to make sure that it's a nice solid blue. And I'm already wondering if this was too much blue. <laughs> Hopefully when it dries back, it'll be a little better. I did want to say about these paints, considering this is the first time I've used them, so I'm going to give them a little mini review. You know, I kind of enjoy them. Um, they're really basic shades, so they're not going to be super, like a different color for you, but um, I do like how solid they are, and they're really pigmented. I like that. Blue is looking real dark now, <laughs> so I'm wondering that may have been a bad choice grabbing some paper towels. And I'm like, can I walk this back a little? Not really. Maybe by adding a little bit of water. And then, okay, that did walk it back just a little bit. But I don't think I'm gonna get it without the variations in color. It's gonna not, it's gonna be not solid, <laughs> which I guess I'm just gonna be okay with, it's okay. There is, <clears throat> there is this other blue shade. I think I maybe would have done that one instead. And then when it got a little darker, it wouldn't be quite as intense. So I'm gonna take this off and just work with this one now. All right, so what Jeff did was he did some paint splatter so I'm gonna do the same. So I'm gonna do my usual paint splatter technique where I have paint on an acrylic block and then I flick it off the edge of the block. And he did something really cool where he masked off sections. So I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna start up here with that red. Nice puddle of red on my block here. I want it to be fairly fluid. Like right now it's probably the consistency of like a really heavy cream. I want it to be more like, almost like a skim milk. Okay, this is looking a little better. It's a little more fluid now. And then I can just flick off the edge here. And I want quite a bit of this splatter because it's gonna take up that whole section. All right, I'm going to have just the bottom edge of that red exposed. Then I have another one right here, and this is where I'm going to do my orange. 
And like I did before, I want the consistency of like a skim milk. So I'm going to add some water to this. Better. Then I can... All right, and now I'm going to dry this and then I can move on to the yellow. Now you guys get the idea. I'm going to speed up the video so you can see as I move all the way down, but you get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm going to do quite a bit of die cutting now. So I need to die cut the heart and I need to die cut one of these layers out of this one. So the heart, I'm going to have it be right there. Use a little bit of washi tape to keep that in place. And then as far as this one goes, it's going to go on the front of a card. And I want it to be just a little bit smaller than the card front. So I think I'll use this one right here. This is the Waffle Flower A2 card layer dies or the A2 layer dies. All right, and while I have my die cutting machine out, I'm going to cut the other piece for the thank you heart. It's the one that goes right on top of the, the heart I already cut out. And I'm going to just use some regular Nina classic crest solar white. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of stamping. I'm using the one of a kind stamp set from the stamp market. And I'm going to have it be on the paint splatter. So I'm going to keep the stamp in my Misty stamp positioning tool. Yeah, I'm gonna to have to stamp it a few times to get it really solid. As far as the thank you heart goes, I'm going to put some Gina K Connect glue on the back and I'm holding it with my tweezers while I do this because I want to make sure I get enough adhesive on the back. And I'm just using dabs of glue kind of just all over. If you wanted to, there are a few different ways you could adhere a intricate die cut like this. Um, you could put some stick it adhesive on it before die cutting. So that would go on the back. 
Um, you could use a spray adhesive on the back all at once. That's usually pretty fast, although you do want to be in a well-ventilated area. Um, let's see what else could you do. You could use a Xyron Create, a sticker machine, or a Creative Station Lite because it's a little bit bigger. You could use that. Um, there's quite a few different things you could use. All right, I'm just going to hold this down with my fingers for a little bit just until it has time to really stick to that watercolor paper. The good thing about the Gina K Connect glue is that it does dry clear, so anything that kind of squidges out should dry clear. I'm going to use white card bases. These are going to be Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound card bases. Scoring at five and a half. And then I'm going to use some foam tape to adhere these onto the card bases. And these are gonna be really, really simple cards. I'm not doing a whole lot to them. All right, there's one card. And then the other, which is gonna be a super simple one. There we go. There are the cards for today, two very simple watercolor rainbow backgrounds. Hope you guys enjoyed both of these. Thank you again to Jeff and everyone in the live chat on Saturday night for this fun idea with the paint splatters. Um, I think the actual doing it in a spectrum came from Amy, who is the owner and founder of the Snap Market, which is the company that makes these stamps. So that's kind of fun. Um, thank you again so much for watching today. All the supplies will be listed down below as usual. Um, use those links to do your shopping. It helps support my YouTube channel and helps me bring three videos to you every week. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back on Wednesday for another card video. Until then, happy crafting, and I'll see you guys next time.